welcome to Couple with Chris live. Uh, is this this is now episode one? I think I did one previously, but we called that the uh, the not promo. What's the what's the word I'm looking for when they do a TV show and then is it going to go into full production? One of them, anyway. I can't remember what it's called. Leave a leave a message in the comments. Pilot. That's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> pilot. But yeah, you can, uh, if you do have any questions about anything during this live, or if you see it later, again, you can add them in the comments. If you add them whilst it's live, I'll try and uh, answer them before the internet cuts out. That's what happened last time. I didn't actually wrap up or end in any succinct way. The internet just cut out on me in the end. Uh, and also another thing that I learned from the, from the uh, pilot episode, was if people do join me, like it looks like somebody is joining now. See, somebody has joined, but I'm not gonna mention who they are unless they specifically engage with me. Uh, I know some people like to just be a fly on the wall and uh, watch these kind of things, but they don't want the <laughs> acknowledgement of me calling them out or, or naming them. So feel free to interact if you do wanna <laughs> make a comment or question or just a statement or just give me random abuse, whatever you want, then, uh, you're more than free to do that, but otherwise I won't be naming and shaming. There's no shame in this. There's no shame to be watching me have a lovely, lovely cup of tea. Uh, what I'll be doing in these, uh, for anyone that didn't catch the last one, is just taking time out in the day just to have a, have a brew and just say what's going on in my mind. Uh, as with the vlog, I'm going to try and have some sort of general theme to go along during each episode. Uh, I hate people who do air quotes, but every time I say the word episode or show, then I have to do these air quotes. Uh, oh, I feel the compulsion to do it. Uh, so yeah, I will be having a brew in each episode. Change the hammer. Uh, I'll try and do a different one each time. I mean, geez, there's, there's so many things going on in the world. Does anyone really care what tea I'm drinking? But again, it's a bog standard uh, cup of mug even of pg tips this time i've got many 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 cups of tea to be sharing with you over the over the weeks but as this is the official first episode even i'm getting tired of doing that already then uh i've just gone for another boring one but it is in the homer cup uh so this this mug i've had for many 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 years uh i don't know I went to uni in 2005 and I definitely had it then in first year of uni. Uh, I actually had two of them. Uh, I lived with uh, a bunch of guys and girls in, uh, in Aberystwyth in, in Wales. And it was, yeah, several times a day, uh, either Jack or Griffin would knock on my door. We having a brew, we having a Homer. Uh, so it was always in the, the Homer mug. Like I said, I did have two of them. Uh, anyone that's grown up with a, a younger or older brother, knows that you generally end up with two of everything in the house so we both had one and i sort of took them both to you with me but the other one is somewhere in the forest in Aberystwyth, in between the uh, my third year halls and constitution hill i went for a walk in the woods one day with my cup of tea sat down on a log was having a phone call this isn't a euphemism it was a wooden wooden uh, log in the forest and then it's quite a heated phone call, actually. I'm not going to even go into what the details of that were. But when I got home, I realized I would uh, lost my Homer. So this is the last one I've got. As you can see, it's been heavily, I'm going to say palmed rather than fingered. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a lot of Homer's head has, has, has come off, man. That was a bit of a digression. So I'm going to try and have a, a theme for each, uh, for each episode. And today is finding your tribe on the on the internet. That's going to be the tenuous uh, theme that threads all these random things together. But I'm actually really excited about uh, today's episode. Right, I'm not doing the air quotes anymore. That was the last time. Uh, but yeah, uh, I've got so many things to be getting on with today. Not on my not on my business, but just around the house. Like this is probably the only tidy area of the room at the moment otherwise it looks like a bomb has gone off the house needs cleaning the fish tank needs the water changing and there's just stuff all over the floor so that all needs sorting before i go to karaoke tonight and as i was walking home 
early this afternoon. I said to Ermi, oh, I really want to do a vlog today. Or I really want to, I just feel inspired to do a vlog or just do a couple with Chris. Usually the vlogs are when I'm out and about and walking. It's just easy to pick up the phone. I'm at home. I'm going to be doing this. Uh, just going live on the desktop version. But I was like, I'm going to get everything done and then I'll do it. But the inspiration has struck. <laughs> I was feeling very, very uh, high energy. And I was like, you know what? I just want to get in front of the camera now. What's, uh, what's Nick Howard saying? Yorkshire tea, like the tea used to be. It isn't. It's uh, PG tips. I don't even know where that comes from. Well, I don't know. China? It's tea, right? But no, it's not, a, it's not a Yorkshire blend. I do have Yorkshire tea in the cupboard. I've got many, many uh, fruity concoctions, mangoes and strawberries and other fruits that I don't even know what they are. Uh, they're all from the European store in Brook Street. I tend to go there. They've got a very, very wide selection of, of teas. So yeah, today, the very tenuous thread stringing everything together, as you can tell, I'm in a very, very excitable mood. And I'm also saying the word very a lot. I'm conscious of that. Uh, finding your tribe on the internet, and I don't just mean for uh, content creators, but also content consumers as well. Uh, just the, there was something I listened to last night by... Uh, if you've caught any other things, I, I do listen to a lot of RSD Tyler and Julian and all the other RSD lads. Uh, but Tyler can just get very, very long rants. And one of the, I think it was like a three hour rant that I drifted off to last night, he was talking about how uh, how crazy just modern society is, but how fast things are moving. So when I got this mug, what, in 2005, was YouTube, YouTube was out, uh, but it was still fairly new. I remember back then, uh, I wasn't even on Facebook. Uh, Facebook was barely out. I got on it in 2008, I think, 2007, 2008, still quite early. But 2005 was still back in the MSN days. So if you wanted to message someone back home when you were at uni or even a few years before that, it's sick form. You'd be on MSN. Uh, you could DM people. Could you even have, uh, it probably wasn't even called DMing. Uh, could you even have group chats? I can't even remember if you could have more than one person in a chat. Maybe you couldn't, I just didn't have that many friends. Uh, you could definitely customize your status or status. I, I was going to say, put it in the comments whether it's status or status, but no matter which, which camp you fall in, it's going to be spelled exactly the same, so that isn't really going to work. Use, use an audio message. I'm quite fond of an audio message these days. But you could change your status, and mine used to be some probably emo-y looking thing with uh, rainbows and stars. Uh, I say emo, probably came across as quite gay, probably why I was a bit of a late bloomer and didn't get a girlfriend for quite an uh, embarrassingly long time. But uh, yeah, that was... 2005 when yeah maybe I'd use YouTube a little bit to look things up but I was more just watching very very stupid things online uh what was it fatpies.com with with Devo I know Nick you've uh, you've engaged with me now so you've opened your uh, opened yourself up to this this engagement I know Nick was quite fond of meatspin.com that was one of his favorites if you haven't seen it check it out uh highly highly endorsed by uh, Nick Howard, uh, I only came across this, <laughs> probably a bad uh, bad use of language if you are aware of what meatspin.com is, but I only came across this about two, three years ago whilst working with, with Dick and other colleagues at Railways. <laughs> I did not go on it on the work computer. Let's, uh, let's nip that dirty rumour in the bud right now. So where was I going with that? Yeah, how crazy the internet has moved on and the ability to find your tribe online. So there's a lot of very niche subjects. I'm going to say niche rather than weird, which they are quite frankly, very, very weird uh, subjects that I'm into. And I seem to, are you on track for the day? I'm being interrupted by my Alexa here. So here's another interesting thing. I have programmed my Alexa to go off every couple of hours to ask me, well, in that case, are you on track for the day? It will also, at several points during the day, ask me, am I just being busy or am I actually being productive? Am I inventing things to do? <laughs> uh, 
occasionally just reads me a Zen koan, asks me if I'm present. <laughs> Am I aware of what's going on in my body? Learn uh, many, many things about me here. So these are some of the weird and, uh, yeah, some of the rabbit holes I've been down online where I've got into like Eckhart Tolle and presence and a lot of things that way back in 2005, the very logical, quite straight-laced Chris would have uh, dismissed as woo-woo and uh, not for him. And now I am fully embracing these very, very uh, esoteric, crazy uh, passions of mine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I keep going back to 2005. It could take a long time to get up to date in 2020. But back, back then it was MSN. Uh, there was no, there were social networks, I guess, there's MySpace, but I never really got on that. I think I did finally, finally set up a, uh, set up a profile eventually. Uh, but that was more just to, there was a girl that I really liked. So I wanted to connect with her on there and it worked out. We ended up together for two years, but that was my only reason for going on, on MySpace. Uh, Facebook was the first, uh, proper social network that I got on that is also, uh, stood the test of time anyone that's been uh watching my stories recently will know that i'm going pretty hard on tiktok at the moment uh which again came from some of these finding your tribe online not that tiktok is my tribe but uh going to gary v a good few years ago probably about three three four years ago uh for anyone that doesn't know who gary v is gary v is a very uh loud american uh on the digital marketing kind of slant of things uh he's all uh he, he's very marmite you either love him or you hate him when i first watched him i was like i really like this guy's stuff but it was again it's one of these quite niche things he's becoming a lot more mainstream now that i just sort of stumbled on because i think he did a collaboration with maybe Tim Ferriss or he was on something else that I was watching at the time and I thought, oh, I'll go and check out more of his things. And then before you know it, I'm listening to the podcast. I've got him on YouTube. I've been to conferences as well uh, that he's, he's been live at. But he, the reason I'm talking about this, is someone that suggested TikTok uh, and that's the reason I was more interested in it is just because of the pure organic reach of TikTok. Uh, so as far as social networks go at the moment, if you're not doing paid for advertising and things, then to do a post, even if you've got zero connections on there, it can spread pretty far, pretty fast. Uh, also like LinkedIn at the moment. LinkedIn is obviously more of an established platform. I got on that. 2009 the year i graduated i think i was going for a graduate sales job in pareto's law i think it was i was applying for a group interview there and they suggested getting on it i was like what is this linkedin they told me it was the uh, facebook of the corporate world essentially i got on it i made a profile but for years it's been basically a tool for just recruiting uh but then over the last 12 24 months it's really exploded people are a lot more content on there so i think when i first signed up for it i connected with a handful of people then i worked in recruitment myself so my linkedin numbers went up quite a bit it was on all my email signatures i connected with all the candidates or hiring managers and things my although i was based in wilmslow uh in the manchester area my patch was in the midlands so a lot of my contacts were uh, based in the Midlands, quite a lot in London as well, but they're all in the technical arena, uh, mainly web developers. And again, this, <laughs> my mind just meandering as usual. Uh, back then in what we'd have, 2010, 2011, this is when uh, iPhones were a lot more popular and there was the whole, uh, everyone was, jumping on the app bandwagon so there's kind of a gold rush for apps. a lot of app developers so there's a lot of ios developers with uh hire for companies uh which is obviously still very very popular but 
this kind of goes into the uh, the opportunity arena of back then. There weren't so many apps, but there were a lot of people that had these new iPhones and uh, wanted to play around with apps, which is where voice and Alexa skills seem to all tie in together somehow. Uh, how voice and Alexa skills uh, are at the moment. So that aren't as many uh, apps, oh, I did it, I did. Uh, there aren't as many apps as there's demand for it. So if you do create a, a, an app, then there's a lot more chance of it being being featured. Uh, hey Mosav, uh, how's it going? It's going really, really well. Um, so for anyone else that's joining as well, I won't acknowledge people, there's been quite a few people that have dropped in. I won't uh, name anyone unless you you engage with me first. Uh, yeah, man, it's going uh, it's going really well. Uh, try not to name people that aren't in, involved. But last time I saw you in Manchester, we we discussed another guy that we uh, went to the University of Liverpool with, and I actually bumped into him a few weeks later. You told me he was on a coding course, and uh, I was like, oh, that sounds like code that uh, that I go to, and it's hosted by. The actual physical location where we have it is hosted by uh, another coding academy in Chester. And that's where our, our good friend was when I when I bumped into him. A very very small small world, which is my topic for today: the power of the internet and how you can really meet up with your uh, your tribe, your people, people that have common interests to you. Um, so. Last night, I was listening a lot to RSD Tyler, and he, he was also riffing on these kind of things, but also simultaneously playing around on TikTok when I came across this uh, very, very, uh, I'm going to say weird, I love it, but it's, it's uh, peculiar content from... I mean, I don't, I can't even say what genre it is. It seems to be a thing all of its own. If if anyone on here does use TikTok, I see a, a few people have, have started to, to jump on it as well recently. Uh, the <sighs> crash, I need more, more sugar in this tea. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, yeah, it, it's. It seems to be the same content that, that that comes up. It's a. I've never I've never got onto a social media platform so early in its in its uh, lifespan. Uh, it was it was called Musically before uh, it was acquired, I believe, by by uh, TikTok. So it has been out for quite a while. So I'm not like a very very early adopter, but it's still still fairly fresh. It doesn't seem to be so mainstream at the moment. Uh, it was originally for like lip syncing uh, and it's very, very uh, music and dance based, but there are a lot of other content creators on there. And a lot of people, quite frankly, just bitching about the algorithm, uh, complaining that they're not getting enough views or they're not getting enough followers and things. But yeah, it's... it's Kind of like the the wild uh, the wild west at the moment, like a, a new frontier. There's a lot of a lot of crazy innovative stuff going on there, but also a lot of the the same things just keep coming around, being being recycled, rehashed. Uh, I I never really got big on Twitter. Uh, I used it for a side project a good few years ago uh, called Everything Chester. So I use Twitter a lot for that, so I was aware of like how trends work more. But uh, you know, you can jump on a trend and ride a trend and that kind of thing. But because I was doing something fairly uh, location based, I could have used trends. So I could have always seen what's trending in the news and kind of related that to Chester and road trends and all that. But it was just a side project, something I did of evenings and weekends so I didn't take it too serious but at the moment on uh, TikTok you just kind of see I'll see someone and go oh that, that's kind of cool uh, but then 
15 swipes later and trust me it's quite addictive as well so before you know it a whole half hour hours come by like what am i doing watching this uh and at first it is a lot of it is pure rubbish but you do find little little gold nuggets in there and the algorithm gets trained to know what you like so uh i mean you could be watching this in a few years time where tiktok is completely mainstream everyone knows exactly what i'm on about but like chris why are you explaining the for you page to me maybe you're watching this in three four years and tiktok completely died a death and everyone's like what's tiktok like <laughs> it had that quick flash in the pan and burned out who knows who knows what way it's going to go but essentially when you land on that on like facebook uh you're not connected so much with friends but uh Okay, it's a bit more like Twitter where it's it's okay to just jump in on random random conversations uh, and replicating content and mashing up content is very much uh, encouraged. So you'll see something and you think, oh, that's, that's really original. Uh, but then a few swipes later, you see it again and then again, you're like, oh, I see, it's a, it's a trend. So someone did do this probably a few days ago a few hours ago and now everyone's jumped on it and they're, they're milking it for those those uh, likes and things but on there i'm trying to stay true to myself as well so everyone has their reasons for doing certain things on social media uh mine will be i'll be growing a business so i will want to wear this for the business as well uh which at the moment probably isn't the best strategy to use TikTok just because of the demographic that uses it. Like they're not going to be local at the moment. Like it's it's quite international. Uh, the age group skews younger, so I'd probably my efforts would be uh, a lot better suited to LinkedIn at the moment. But damn, TikTok is pretty pretty fun, and I seem to be using the content from TikTok and pushing it onto other platforms as well so uh, i'll be posting things off TikTok onto linkedin if it's relevant uh, and into instagram stories and facebook stories as well you'll see a lot of my my facebook stories but uh i've been using it to vlog uh just quick 60 second vlogs daily uh just documenting my uh the startup journey of this business uh, and then I guess over time it will evolve more into uh, advice so as well as documenting what I'm doing there will be advice of people going down a similar path but also advice of people for uh, digital marketing and uh, web development and online presence and all, all that kind of advice which is the kind of information uh, and skills that my potential and future clients will be will be uh looking to me i guess to, <laughs> to provide uh but at the moment i'm just sort of playing on it and i know it, it the the vlogs don't get so many views uh but i know that if i just jump on a trend and just literally recreate something which is like only five percent my personality personality on top of something that's already trending like the amount of views and eyeballs that that post will get is crazy but uh i won't just do that for the sake of it it'll have to be something that i find really funny and i'm like oh yeah i can see how this relates to what i'm doing and then i will post that kind of thing but uh oh my desktop's going a bit funny here It gives my uh, vocal cords a few seconds to chill out. I've been talking non-stop for, what is it, 24 minutes now? Oh, that's gone very fast. Yeah, what was I talking about? Selling out to the TikTok algorithm. So, uh, yeah, there are certain songs or certain uh, voice tracks that you can almost, uh, what's the word, like, lip sync to or like dub yourself to uh and put your own little spin on it 
but I'm primarily using it for the vlogging side. Again, it's just it's very quick and easy to add transitions and things, uh, and it's also very easy to share to other social networks. So, uh, yeah, for pretty much 20 consecutive days, I've sort of gone on there and, and posted daily. I'm thinking of putting it on the back burner just because it's not a priority at the moment. When I'm in the mood for doing it, I really, really enjoy doing it. But also when there's other critical things that I need to be getting done with, yeah, fair enough, self-imposed deadlines. Uh, maybe posting content on TikTok isn't, isn't a priority, but I'm also aware that I only get a one shot really to to document starting my very first business. So I don't want to completely cull it and get rid of it, but uh, I think I'm only going to do it when inspiration strikes as opposed to, I don't want it to be a forced thing where it's like, oh, it's that time of the day again, I need to do my TikTok. Uh, so yeah, it's only going to be maybe, I'm not going to say a certain time period, maybe a whole week will go by and I'll just do a week recap and maybe there'll be times where I'll do it daily again. And it's just going to, ebb and flow we'll see but uh some people that are seeing the posts on my stories uh in instagram and facebook you know some of them have dm me or when i'm out and about i'll see people and they they seem to be enjoying it they're telling me to my face that they enjoy it uh and it's a good way to keep people in the loop as well uh life's so crazy at the moment uh you, you swear down, oh, I don't want to be one of those adults that loses contact with all people that are close to me when I'm younger, but then other time demands come in and you realistically don't see people as often as you would. So it, it is a good way to to keep people up to date with, with what you're doing if they're interested. If they're not interested, they don't have to watch it. They can, they can skip over it. But uh, why was I talking about that? Yes, because there was some very <laughs> strange content that I found on there last night. A lot of, as I said, what you'll find on there, it's the same thing again and again and again. Uh, and what I found last night was pretty, pretty fresh, uh, something completely new and I was in a pretty excitable mood as well, as I still am at the moment. And this just really uh, gripped me. And I'm quite, uh, with Instagram, I'm very much the same. I'm, I'm quite uh, conservative with with who I follow and, and, and don't follow. I, I uh, really like to cultivate my feed with only uh, certain, certain things. Uh, so there'll be people you know, almost like best friends that I've had for years. And I won't follow them on Instagram, sure. I'll have them on, on Facebook. But then there's other people that I haven't seen in years or uh, I've only met recently, but I then will follow them. But I, I don't know how to quantify it or who, how do I decide who. It's just certain people where I like to see life through their lens the way they look at the world, so they they make the cut. It sounds awful if I don't actually follow you, but you don't make the cut. But uh, and and again, the same with with TikTok as well. So the algorithm, when you first go on there, you will just be blasted with absolutely everything under the sun, and it, it's basically a lot of uh, women twerking, uh, dancing to the same song over and over again. Uh, but then every so often you'll find something that you're really, really interested in. So there's a guy on there who does a lot of uh, digital marketing and SEO advice and stuff. So as soon as he came up in my feed, I was like, oh, I'd like to go deep on this. I go onto his profile, check out a few of his videos. Right, this guy's definitely worth follow, follow him. And then the algorithm starts to know what you're interested in. It feeds up a little bit more of that. And then there'll be someone else of that uh, content stream, I guess. Uh, so then you follow that one, but then you still get so much drivel on there, on the 
for you page. So I still probably spend more time on the for you page than I do on the following page. So the following page is more like your Facebook feed, I guess, uh, of now your friends. Yeah, quotes again. We should count how many times I did that. I've done done that during this broadcast. Definitely into double digits now. <laughs> and he's saying, make the bird noise. I haven't even got to that yet. <laughs> I'm just uh, just warming up to that. So the bird noise for a 32, getting very close to 33 year old man. <laughs> I'm always looking to call myself a man. Not that I, I identify as trans or anything like that, but uh, I think it's boy, boy in. I'm, it's not even in man's clothing, man. I'm wearing purple trousers for the Lord's sake. But uh, yes, yeah, so I'm still finding it hard to. Uh, I'm not finding it hard to just talk incessantly, but I'm finding it hard to talk and also manage responding to comments. As soon as I reply to a comment, I lose my lose my thread. But that's cool. Keep uh, commenting away. This is this is something for me to manage, and me to learn and grow. The more the better, and then I will adapt and rise like a sexy phoenix from the ashes of burnt down and failed comment responses. Very, very poor metaphor. Uh, so, where was I going with that? Yes, the for you page. So you still get a lot of a lot of uh, drivel on there, uh, but it it slowly learns. And one that I found last night, I think I was listening to RSD Tyler on YouTube, and I thought, I'm going to check out what's going on on a TikTok, see what those crazy kids are up to. And uh, yeah, what can only be described as uh, this, don't know how old they are, but they're, they're definitely a high school student in America who gives, I'm gonna say spiritual advice, like life advice, uh, how, I mean, I mean, how did I describe this to you? How can you describe this in, in one line, what this, what this guy does? But for some reason, maybe it says more about me than it does about them, but I, uh, I really resonated with this uh, off-the-wall content. He basically, uh, in the format of TikTok, gives very, very bite-sized uh, videos most of them are under 15 seconds. The most it can be is, is uh, 60 seconds. He'll give a, a life piece of advice, but then he'll just follow it up with like this weird, uh, like, yeah, bird noise. Uh, at first I thought maybe, I think the reason that I was, I mean, I'm into all that spiritual, uh, spiritual nonsense. <laughs> all, I'm into all that spiritual stuff as well. Uh, but I think what really perked my interest was the intrigue as to what what the hell is this? What am I what am I watching? Like, part of me was, does this guy have like Tourette's? Maybe he has Tourette's because I, I watched us two or three videos, and he always seems to make this sound. But I don't know. He just seemed very. He doesn't have Tourette's. I don't believe. I, I don't think it's a tick. It is completely put on, but at the same time, it's very, very authentic to his personality. So he will drop like this uh, knowledge bomb or piece of uh, spiritual wisdom, which again is also perked my interest with him being so young. Like, and he posts a lot as well. Like, he, I scrolled through the feed watching like some random videos, and I went quite far back. I'm like, he only posted this a week ago. Oh, geez, he's posting like 15 pieces of content a day. What? This this kid's on fire. Where's he getting all this knowledge from? And then my mind starts going, is he just googling like spiritual quotes? and just parroting what somebody else has said. 
but again, I don't think that's the case. I should probably <laughs> give the URL if anyone is on there. Uh, if anyone is on TikTok uh, and you feel like this may be of interest to you, then you can check it out as well. Uh, <laughs> someone who can either be a freak or a genius. Yeah, that that is exactly that is exactly it. I think he's both. Uh, there was a so another one of the weird niche things that I got into a few years ago with the whole uh, I don't want to say online dating because it wasn't online dating, but it was the dating community who have content online but it's based on real world offline. Uh, and there was a TV show called Keys to the VIP where they would have secret cameras in clubs and they would get, it was always two guys uh, would go into the club and they would be given challenges. And there was one guy on that who, they would usually get two polo extremes that had to battle against each other. Battle. Air quotes. I'm going to snap my fingers off every time. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, but they would get to completely opposing characters. They weren't characters, they were real people. But uh, so they took this very macho jock guy who was completely just balling, lived in a mansion, Rolex, cool cars, full, uh, unshakable confidence, like slightly self deluded. I'd, I'd, say as well and uh, maybe that's a slight bit of jealousy for me but he was this guy uh was just interesting i was really into sales at the time just to watch this guy but he wasn't the guy that i was most interested in i was interested in the guy that he was competing against who was uh essentially homeless <laughs> uh he was just couch surfing on friends uh, staying in their front room and then after a few weeks he moved to another he had like no material possessions other than like the clothes he was wearing and he didn't even own a phone even when like he'd be trying to get these girls numbers and they'd have to write it on his arm because he didn't even have a phone to put it in uh, and he was like this uh, he's either the smartest man in the room or the most idiotic man in the world like when he was given the blue pill or the red pill, you know, like in the Matrix, he just had both. He, I, I don't, there was something quite genius about this guy. And that's kind of what this guy on, on TikTok's like. But there's, there's like this, this intrigue, uh, you know, when you look at someone who looks lost, but they're not lost. They, they've got it all figured out. Uh, and just the real, when it's less about the words that they're saying as well, and it's more they're embodying the philosophy that they're, maybe I'm looking way too deep into this, this is just a complete freak high school kid. Uh, but yeah, the message that they're communicating. I was going to give the URL, wasn't I? Let's, uh, let's find it. No internet connection. This can't be true. So his TikTok username is Antoli underscore E. So I'll spell it out. A N A T O L E Y underscore E. Uh, and his at at the current time of broadcasting at the moment, his uh, user profile picture looks like some sort of uh oh, what are they called not the pyramids but the ones in south america uh this is showing my general uh, cultural lack of knowledge but yes uh what, what are they called i've lost the name of it like michi pichu <laughs> i probably just butchered that pronunciation there it is you can you can see it there but uh maybe i should play one of the videos as well but basically he just gives some piece of advice and I was like does does he just google this advice uh, and then just parry it off but then it seems when he does give a quote by someone like uh, he's from the, the little I only discovered this about <laughs> nine hours ago or two o'clock in the morning or something like that uh, about, about 12 hours ago and I've slept since then uh, but he will 
sometimes he'll quote someone, but then he'll give credit to where the quote comes from. And other times he'll just say something completely, almost literally like a Zen koan. And you're thinking, what? What? And it gets you thinking. And then he'll just be punctuated with a... Maybe I should... Uh, I'll play one for you. The only way to win with a toxic person is not to play. <laughs> the only way to win with a toxic person is not to play. <laughs> so, like, click on the first video and you hear that noise and I'm like, oh, is that some sort of tick? Or maybe this kid has, it sounds awful uh, to say, maybe he has some sort of like, special needs, he's making that sound. But then you watch another one and it's the same sort of thing, and then you realize, oh, this is his, his style. Uh, Y'all, be like this turtle. Optimism is the best. <laughs> Y'all, be like this turtle. Uh, I'll play play one more, and then I will we'll go back to my, my thoughts. Uh, he also does, uh, as well as these pieces of advice, he seems to film himself in class. So in America, they're all sitting there in their rows of, of uh, desks, and then he would just whip out the phone and just start filming himself. Not so much singing, but just almost like uh, freestyle, saying the words to a song, make the sound, and then stop, to which no one in the class sort of reacts. Um, I'm picturing myself back in high school, dating myself here. We didn't have this technology, like I had a Nokia with like SMS on it, like we couldn't be filming ourselves and things. But uh, this kind of kid in school, I'm trying to work out would I have been their friend? Because I was pretty weird in school as well, but or would I give them a wide berth? Like I was very, very studious. Although I used to clown a lot, like at break time and stuff, when that bell went, when we were in lesson, I was very studious, and anyone that interrupted the uh, the lesson was the devil. So I can imagine that this guy whipping his phone out and singing like Afro man rap, making a bird song would annoy me. I'd be like, oh, dude, I want to learn the science, but uh, a no, Ellen, what? I'm finna. Beyond, hey, hey, I'm beyond, on that fuck shit. Hey, oh, he didn't no. make the sound. He doesn't always make the sound. Uh, how many times he does? I don't want a Valentine, I just want Valentino. I just want the neck, I poke her face. This is like kind of the lottery of it as well, the fact that he doesn't do it every time. I don't mm. want a Valentine. Never beg anyone to be in your life. If you text, call, visit, and still get ignored, walk away. It's called self-respect, y'all. Never beg. Yeah, maybe I'm on just a bit of a, a sugar high. I'm finding this entertaining. I'll I'll crash in a, a few days' time. <laughs> what the hell was I babbling about? But uh, at the moment, I'm a I'm a big fan. I'm one of the. Uh, 73.1 thousand people that are following this kid with his 3.4 million million likes and uh i also find it really interesting reading the, the comments as well for. like crying how you feel i thought he was going to be getting expressing your absolutely slaughtered in yourself. the comments <laughs> turn it down so I, I thought, I'll go in the comments, like, but people seem to be absolutely loving it. Uh, those endings always catch me off guard, lol. You should not apologize for that noise at the end. Bro, I needed this. He does a lot of, uh, hey, if you're suffering from anxiety or depression, I'm going to pull that out of you, doing like this rope thing. And yeah, I can imagine if I'm ever just having a down day, I'm just going to put this, this guy on. Uh, in times, I'm not uh, not depressed or anxious at the moment. But if anyone knows me, 
I have been in the past. Like, imagine if I had found this, it would have uh, cheered me up no end. But uh, there seems to be nothing but love for him in the in the, the comments as well. So, yeah, that was my uh, <laughs> that was my thoughts. I'm going to wrap up in a minute. It's been 45 minutes, and like I said, I've got a lot to be getting on with today before karaoke at eight o'clock this evening and a, a full week full week ahead of me the inspiration struck and whilst i had that energy i wanted to get on camera and uh, discuss finding your tribe online i've certainly found <laughs> my uh, tribe of of uh nutballs and people that are just following their their passions and their bliss i don't know maybe leave a comment what have you what have you found like i'm always curious when i look over at other people's phones which is a bad habit that i have but i can't help sometimes i'm not even looking i just have the habits that and then i realize and try and try and stop myself but uh how all these social media algorithms put us into different parts and put us into these demographics they know your uh male age between this age and this age who is in a relationship or isn't in a relationship and that has these interests and then they serve up the advertising based on that uh so another thing which really interests me less so than the feed that somebody has but the adverts in the feed i think that is a bigger tell of what they uh what they're really interested in and uh, not just on that social platform but uh on searching on online as well uh, i'd hate to show you what kind of things came up in my, <laughs> my targeted advertising but yeah what uh what things have you found online what i, can, I feel like i could talk about this forever i'm saying i'm gonna gonna wrap up but uh i still got half this is the, this is the thing with a, a big mug i've still got half of this half of this brew left and strangely hasn't gone that cold Do with heating up. We could do with heating up. So I'm uh, seems to be trailing off here. I'm gonna gonna love you and leave you. I'll be back in who knows when. I don't have a set agenda for this. It seems to be a weekday both times that I've done it. I'll be vlogging when I'm out and about, and I will be doing my TikToks not as regularly as previously discussed earlier. But uh, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna love you and leave you. For anyone that's just joined. As I said, I'm not naming people unless they uh, write a comment or want to be engaged with. But if you are interested in what's happened, then you'll be able to watch it on Catch Up. I'll uh, see you all soon. <coughs> you know when your internet's going so slow that you just can't end the live feed? And god damn it. Embarrassing. At least I've noticed that it hasn't ended and I don't.